president got $84 from a timber company that he owns, and he's counted as a small business. I own a timber company? <laughs> That's news to me. You need some wood? <laughs> you need some wood? You create jobs. That's weird. Timber company? What the f was he talking about? Good question. That was a glimpse of what was going on behind the scenes as John Kerry worked his way toward defeat in last year's presidential election. It comes from a new behind-the-scenes documentary called Inside the Bubble. It premieres tomorrow night in New York City. Steve Rosenbaum set up to answer the question as he made it. What happened to the John Kerry for President campaign? He joins me now. Steve, thanks a lot for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. What did happen? He lost. Yeah, I noticed that. He messed up the end of my movie. <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean to blow the suspense. But after nine months of following this man around and getting some pretty amazing access to the process, access that most of us did not get, what did you conclude? Whose fault was it? Well, you know, it's funny. I think that conservatives are going to watch the film and take away something, and I think uh, Democrats are going to watch the film and take away something else. I, I don't know that it's my job to, to read the tea leaves and tell you what I discovered. I think personally, for me, uh, I was hoping that there was going to be more discussion of the issues and a little less, you know, stage management. But, but, but you have to remember... Oh, come on. It's well, a campaign. Well, but hold on a second. Remember that the war room was made in 92. So there really hasn't been a behind-the-scenes look at a campaign in a very long time. And, you know, the media, you guys, have changed things a lot out there. Yeah, we have. Uh, but the, the process itself of covering campaigns, and I've covered way too many of them, uh, is always the same. And you, you capture a moment that rang so true to me. Uh, it's just the, just the ignominiousness, if that's the word, of the process. It's this moment where Kerry ducks into what turns out to be a locker room, yep. and he's waiting to do an uplink to some local television station like Cleveland or Columbus or something. He's sitting there in this stinky locker room, sweating, trying to be nice, because he has to be nice, because they always have to be nice, no matter how much of a drag it is. And finally, the satellite goes down, and he can't do the interview. And the point is, these guys really suffer, no matter who they are, as they run for office. You feel for them. It's a terrible process. Yes. And, and you know, it's a process that probably doesn't necessarily bring out the best in anybody. Uh, but, but again, I think the fun of the film, and the, the reason why I think people are going to enjoy seeing it is, you know, politics is a team sport, but it's also a sport that we all get to play in. So, you know, someone said to me the other day, well, what right did you have to make this movie? I said, well, you know, I got to vote. I, you know, I, have, I get to go to the polling place, you know, once every four years and pull that little lever. And uh, I, I think that... You know, asking people to take a look at what happened and ask some questions, Democrats, you know, and Republicans, are we happy with the outcome? Are we happy with the election? And if not, what are we going to do different? Yeah, who would say, do you, where'd you get the right? Please, we all have the right to know a lot more than we do about what goes on. I want to just throw a clip up here. This is uh, what one Kerry staffer, Jim Loftus, in the communications uh, shop okay. reacting to a New York Times magazine cover. He doesn't like. Watch. By any objective standard, what the f is that? This is the f***ing New York Times f***ing magazine. Look at the f***ing picture. They're not trying to f*** us. It's a pretty horrifying picture. Uh, but, <laughs> but the reason I asked you about the staff and, and who is to blame is right after the election, there was a huge amount of backbiting, as you know, among Democrats. Because if there, if there was any year they could win, it was, of course, last year. Uh, they probably should have won, but they lost. And the staff, everyone was blaming everyone else. Mary Beth Cahill, inadequate, a mediocrity. What did you think of the staff? Were they good? You know, I have to tell you, I liked every one of them. And, and I liked working with them, and I think they worked their tail off. Uh, I don't think it's about an individual staff. And frankly, I mean, I, I'm not a political pundit, and I'm, a, I'm not a political operative. You know, what, what some of the people say in the film, let me report what I hear, which is that, that the way they responded to Swift Boat was disastrous. And people say that in the film, you know, for the first time. And there's some sense of kind of what went wrong there. But, but the thing that I think is almost the most interesting is this idea that that, that original speech at the convention, the, uh, you know, reporting for duty with the, uh, with, with, the, yeah. with the salute was the moment that Rove needed to be able to say, you know, he's a flip-flopper because you can't tell whether he's a peace activist or, you know, or a war hero or both. But and also, uh, it's like you were in Vietnam. You know, I'm really glad for you. You know, good for you, but so were a lot of people. I mean, so what? What does that have to do with anything? What did you learn about John Kerry, the man, in the end? What insight did you get into him? You know, I, I think that one of the things that Mike McCurry says in the film that's really true is, you know, that, that Kerry needs to figure out how to become comfortable with people. And, and in the last two and a half weeks, three weeks, I watched him on film start to be comfortable with the hugging and the touching and the let me be near you. But, you know, it's a rock star life. And if you're not used to having 
you know, crowds of people want to touch you, I think it can be really very off-putting. That's right. Like Al Gore, who finally became comfortable when he went on Saturday Night Live, and then it was too late. Well, yeah. the, the movie is Inside the Bubbles, opens tomorrow in New York. Steve Rosenbaum made it. Thanks for coming on. Thank you.